hello everyone in today's video let us learn about the theories of development you know there are various theories that explains about the various kinds of development that occur in human beings like the physical development moral development language development intellectual development social development etc in today's video let us learn about the cognitive development theory given by jean piaget we have already learned another cognitive development theory which was given by vygotsky the socio cultural theory so what do you mean by cognitive development that is your mental development or intellectual development in other terms we call it as mental or intellectual development what is the term intelligence means intelligence is what you use when you don't know what to do is it not when you don't know the situation you are using your intelligence you are learned things everything to that new situation and you are trying to find a solution to that particular thing is called as an intelligent so cognitive development let us learn some definition what is cognition cognition is an ability of an individual to think and act in a purposeful way the term cognition is derived from the latin word cognoscer which means to know or to recognize you know it is a mental action that is it is a process of acquiring the knowledge which is un and understanding those knowledge through your experiences through your thought process and through your senses you know when you learn with your senses you understand better then what is cognitive development cognitive development is the emergence of the ability to think and understand it is nothing but the ability to think reason and to solve various kinds of problems which we face in our life cognitive development can be said as a process which is occurring throughout the life span of any individual so jean piaget studied this cognitive development by observing the behavior of the children in various stages of their development okay so this theory gives you uh, how the intelligence or the cognitive development is getting more and more structured and refined as the child mature this is going to be an adaptation to the physical and the social environment in which they live next what is cognitive or the mental or the intellectual development means that it is how we organize our experiences and adapt to the world take for example if you are moving in a rainy season it is necessary that you take up a raincoat and uh, go outside to the world so this is how you organize your knowledge that is i have to protect myself from the rain i have to protect so this is going to organizing your experiences and adapting to the changing environment so uh, do you think intelligence remains the same no intelligence though the percentage the level of intelligence remains the same its structure and its functioning that is a cognitive structure is going to change from stage by stage you will not have the same cognitive level of intelligence when you were in your uh, lower class now your cognitive structure would have been increased is it not so this theory gives you an idea about how the children acquire knowledge and how they develop and mold their knowledge according to their growth so what is cognitive development uh, this cognitive development is going to be an interaction of your inner capacity and the environmental uh, things which are around you then he says that uh piaget's very important uh, thing what he noted is that he says about schemas schemas what is schema he says that 
Uh, schema is nothing but some mental structures which are present in an individual to understand about the thing. This schema is going to increase in its abstraction and complexity as we mature. Schemas are nothing but the basic building blocks of our knowledge which is present innate in us and which is going to be modified with the environment in which we live. So he says that uh, you can't uh, gain only the knowledge only through your uh, sensory experiences but you have to give some uh, reproductive thing to that namely you have to refine it and then so he says that your basic mental structure which is present inborn in the children are called a schema. Take for example when a child is newborn and uh, uh, it doesn't know anybody doesn't teach the child to suck and grasp the things is it not you can see immediately it will uh, suck uh, the breast of the mother when it is given so it is the sucking reflex is already present this is going to be modified as a child matures so this is called as a schemas okay next he defined the cognitive structure or schema into two uh, things first called as in organization and adaptation so this organization first you have to organize the things is it not you have to uh, uh, find out the things and serial out them you have to arrange them smaller bigger very bigger like that and then you have to adapt to the environment so he says that your schema is going to undergo organization and adaptation and this organization has two process namely assimilation and accommodation okay then let us see some examples of schema what is a schema a schema is nothing but a schema for grasping or sucking the structure the self it, it is an uh, present inside the child so when the development of cognition is there we have new schemas which are developed in our body so assimilation and accommodation are both the process of the cognitive development for example uh, the children when they learn any fruits uh, we say that something which is sweeter in taste is a fruit then later we will give them some other fruit which is bitter in taste likewise you can take some other example like uh, a child is introduced about all that have uh, four legs or uh, four legs a uh, dog is an animal which is having a four legs not that all the four legged animals are dog so they will find out oh this is not a dog later it modifies its schema this is a cat this is a this is something like the you can see it is a cow like that they change this so this is going to occur in their process so adaptation will occur when assimilation and accommodation together they proceed okay yes next what is assimilation the process of fitting your new experiences into the previously existing thing so already i told you the child has been introduced to that all that is having uh, the sweet taste is a, a fruit now we will give a bitter fruit and say that this is also a fruit and later you will ask the child to uh, get, take a fruit which is having a seed then seedless like that they will uh, start accommodating the new schemas modifying the schemas then what is equilibration the process of achieving a proper balance between assimilation and accommodation is called as a equilibration so this is what explained by piaget when he started explaining the intelligence growth in children he explained about these concepts then you can see um, what is uh, what are the stages in which intelligence development or the cognitive development occur in children or there are four different stages sensory motor stage 0 to 2 years pre-operational stage 2 to 7 years concrete operational stage 7 to 12 years formal operational period 12 and above next you can see in this uh, table you can see what are the uh, stages and what happens what cognitive development is occurring at that in the sensory motor stage they learn anything by sensing and acting no when you give anything to the child at this stage they will first grasp it sense it touch it feel it uh, put it into their mouth and then try to understand the thing okay 
in the pre-operational stage they are able to form concept and they are uh, able to represent the by symbolic uh, reasoning the things and when they go for the concrete operational stage they get into logical and concrete objects and events and they are able to have calculations multiplication symbol they understand the things they are able to follow the rules and norms then in the formal operation stage they are able to think in abstract ways they are able to reason in hypothetical way deductive way and inductive reason develops at this stage you can see here the major developments are listed uh, at the four stages of the growth of a child in the sensory motor stage they have what they have to do what they have to finish is that they have to acquire pre verbal they have to talk is it not they have to repeat the movements which are given to them they learn the behavior by trial and error method and they come to an object permeance and an animism at this stage what is object permeance so you can see here in the next picture what is object permeance this is the ability of the child to know that an object still exists even when it is out of style take for example a child is playing here with a doll and if i put a screen or hide it it immediately it thinks that it doesn't know that it is already lying there it forgets and it goes back and plays with some other object but when they start maturing they start searching of those object okay so this is object permeance and then you can see they imitate the behavior of the uh, adults whoever they come across they start to imitate them okay this is a first stage then coming to the second the pre operational stage where it is from 2 to 7 years normally we call this period as a toddler or the early childhood stage so in this period the child begins to use uh, use different kinds of symbols and languages you know they develop their words images they are able to uh, make perfect sentences with uh, very simple words and they are able to so, uh, do some uh, small calculations like uh, plus addition minus division subtraction like that so this stage has two uh, sta sub stages namely the pre conceptual stage which is from 2 to 4 years and the intuitive stage which is from 4 to 7 years so in the pre uh, conceptual stage you can see they use verbal representations uh, and they are egocentric they do everything for their uh, things they say that i am i am real i am and i am uh, i am playing with a doll that uh, they think that the inanimate things are also animated they think that uh, feed the baby like the, they will keep a doll and say that it's my friend i have to feed it when i eat it also has to take its food like that they will speak okay and uh, when they are uh, maturing enough now in the intuitive stage they are able to come to realize that something or not real they have a sense and they become less egocentric not everything they get they will be saying before it's mine it's mine now they understand that all that doesn't belongs to them they are start able to um, they just find there are some difference between us living and non living things then in this stage the important development which occurs in the children or egocentrism egocentrism is that you can see um, they are able to um, uh, see if you keep some uh, objects near to them and ask what are the objects which are lying in front of you then the child will be saying uh, this is uh, i see a doll i see a dog like that but they will not be able to see things which are uh, hidden at the back side of those objects huh? so if uh, they will be saying that i can't see the objects which are not able to be seen by me then the animism is nothing but they try to treat the inanimate things as a living ones you can see the children feeding their dolls huh? giving them bath making them to sleep like that and uh, the next one is concentration as is well they are not able to uh, find the difference between take for example if you are trying to give them an uh, uh, 10 ml of water in a beaker and if you transfer it uh, to a beaker of very uh, very high length they will be saying the water length is very small though the water quantity is same in both the vessels they are not able to reverse the things and concrete in their ideas okay you can see here 
the tendency of the child to only see from his point of view and they cannot uh, see from others point of view uh, egocentrism centration and symbolic functioning starts at this stage then they are realism they are able to uh, think from different ways and uh, uh, believing that the psychological dreams the dreams that comes for them are real and true they think that like that and they can't do uh, uh, reversible operations like uh, if they if you ask them 3 plus 2 is equal to 5 but when you ask them 5 minus 3 is what they will be struggling a hard to repeat the thing and then um, you can see they have the lack of conversa uh, conservation they are not able to uh, tell what is a uh, realize some things or unchanged despite they are uh, given a effect different effect and then and they are not able to find out what is the reason behind some activities and all at this stage then we can see the uh, concrete operational stage the next stage where we see con uh, conservation decentering reversibility they are able to find the things and uh, transitivity they are able to classify the things and they eliminate their ego uh, egoistic belief here and this is what happens at this stage you can see here the ability of the child to perceive different futures of the objects and thing if you give different kinds of uh, like a square triangle they are able to find them what is the difference between the thing and they are very clearly able to give them and uh, reversibility where the child is able to follow certain operations which can be done in reverse like uh, uh, you can ask him 8 plus 5 is equal to 13 and then if you ask 5 plus 38 is equal to 13 in a reverse from they are able to and seriation where they are able to classify and arrange the things according to their height weight size everything they okay then the next is the formal operational play the final stage is that they go to the formal operation it is the stage where the children go, are about 12 and uh, above where it is the adolescent stage they the adolescent become increasingly flexible and they are having an abstract thinking process they understand the problems and they uh, use any logical method and a scientific way to solve the problem they develop uh, logical thought deductive reasoning and they understand everything even if it is uh, not very clearly present before them okay uh, this is a stage where they become they develop their hypothetical reasoning analogical reasoning and deductive reasoning so hypothetical reasoning is nothing but where they are able to come up with a different hypothesis uh, that is they are able to find different solutions to the same problem analogical reason they are able to perceive the relationship of one instance and use the same relation to another uh, problem of similar uh, condition okay and then deductive they are able to think logically by applying the general loose, uh, rules that they have already learned to a new or a particular situation which are prevailing to them okay then that's all about the uh, uh, thing and let's see the what are the educational implications of this theory this theory emphasizes on discovery approach so they say that uh, Piaget says that as a teacher we have to provide discovery mode of learning in the classrooms and the classroom curriculum and the education experiences provided to the children should be according to their level of intelligence not that a, a high level of uh, learning experience should be given for a children of lower class depending upon their mental age and chronological age we have to give them the activities and uh, they say that uh, simple to complex and project method of teaching should be encouraged more we have to give more number of co-curricular activities so that they develop their cognitive structures and education goals should be creating a critical and a creative thinking among the children they say that um, activity based curriculum is more encouraged for the children in the schools uh, it says that uh, we have to care about the drives and motivation we have to provide them drives and motivation to learn in the uh, classroom provide a child centered curriculum to the children to learn to develop their cognitive structure more and the learning experiences should be according to the child's mental ability and encourage play way learning and learning by doing so it develops their moral and intellectual growth as such goes together and proceeds in a 
unique way. You can see here Vyaji who has given and uh, he says that this particular way if you follow the schemas are going to be modified and it uh, undergoes various assimilation. The learner will become a very good scientist or an inventor or an active learner. So it makes the learning to be more constructive and helps to accommodate and uh, find an equilibrium in the thing. So what are the applications of this theory is that it promotes self learning. It uh, t uh, The teacher can develop and enhance the children based upon their learning behavior. Okay. I hope uh, you would have understood about Piaget's theory of learning. Very good. Okay. The meaning of the word bravo means you have understood the concept well. Thank you once again for listening to this video.